So what we've got are two 30 wide by 157 foot long. Um, and then they're tied together with a, what we call a corridor, which is just a 10 wide by 20 long uh, tied in both sides. And then the first 10 feet of each 157 long is, is part of that corridor. So we've got a total of 80 feet by 10 of a separated head house corridor um, before you get to the greenhouse itself. The center 10 by 20 right there essentially just houses all of your greenhouse controls. So you're gonna have your, your water filters, um, your fogging pump. This thing's got a fogging system in it, uh, about a 3000 PSI fogging system um, to maintain temperature and add humidity to it. Um, so there's gonna be a pump in there for that. It'll have all of your your function controls. Uh, so each greenhouse has five intake louvers, 12 exhaust fans, uh, a wet wall, a shade system, and all of that will be automated inside that. There'll be a, a large control box. And so, for example, you know, depending on what, what's gonna be grown in there, um, you, can, you can pinpoint the optimal environment for that product that you're gonna grow. So if you say, you know, I want 88 degrees, I want 75% humidity, and I want it for this amount of time during the day, and then the other amount of time I want X temperature and X amount of humidity, that'll all be able to be programmed and it'll automate itself. So it'll open vents, it'll open fans, it'll open louvers, it'll shade, it'll close, it'll open, and it'll do it all automated. Um, and it'll maintain whatever it is that you want to happen inside there at any given moment uh, of the operation. So we've got six eight foot oversized double doors, uh, two on each entrance here, and then two to separate the greenhouse and two on each end to mirror it. And then just two single man doors, um, and then four windows, uh, six by fives that are mirrored uh, so that you can look from the outside of the building into the greenhouse and vice versa from inside the greenhouse to outside the building uh, through the corridor. Yeah, this is a standard series end wall. Um, they come pretty universal. So there's holes for any type of equipment that you would want to put in these things, just depending on what series you know, decides that you need for ventilation and, and doors and windows and, and vents and exhaust fans and things of that nature. A lot of, you know, a lot of math has been gone into it. Um, a, a series greenhouse always runs east and west and always has a south facing side and a north facing side. And if, you know, we did a standard traditional pitch, uh, break in the middle, you're gonna lose light exposure to approximately 10 feet of the north wall. Um, and so that way we accentuate the 312 pitch 24 feet out in a 30 wide, and then it goes to a nine and a half 12 pitch, uh, just to give it a full spectrum of light four feet up the north wall. So that in the, you know, on, on June 21st, when the sun is as furthest point north, and it's going across this thing, the light will be direct four feet up on that north wall by giving it the, the offset slope right there. So it's got a, it's got a, you know, a standard, I don't know if it's standard, a two by three collar tie uh, across the bottom, um, and then just standard inch and a half webbing, the bigger webbing going all the way across, and two inch knee braces uh, in every corner coming up there, which we use then uh, to integrate part of our shade cloth system on that angle right there. Um, so that we have, the shade cloth system is essentially to create two different environments, uh, one above and one below. Um, and they use that heat retention to bring it down inside when it cools down. Uh, you'll open that shade cloth up and that heat will start to infiltrate inside the building when it's nighttime um, and keep it warmer a little bit longer. But mainly, you know, for in the summer, the greenhouses get extremely hot. And so there's, there's uh, an exhaust system that goes above to release the heat, but we try to separate that from the bottom. And then there's an entire control system for the bottom of that. And like I said, when it's automated, that control box will, will move that screen and there'll be temperature sensors in there, humidity sensors in there that'll say, okay, you know, we need to open this screen up 12 inches and it's gonna, it's gonna raise the temperature up five degrees and then they'll close it back up uh, and use it, use it as, a, as a control device. Yeah, so the, the insulated metal panels uh, come from a company out of Arkansas called AWIP, that's all weather insulated panels. Um, and they're a double tongue and groove system. They're a two and a quarter inch thick uh, closed cell foam wrapped seamlessly in 26 gauge embossed sheet metal front and back. 
um, come in a multitude of colors, just like any other sheet metal product does. Um, and then inside both tongue and grooves, uh, you get a non-skinning butyl sealant um, that eliminates any air infiltration, any bug infiltration uh, that goes in there. But that also provides you with a, with a, a seamless, non-exposed fastener exterior look to it. Um, so no matter where you're at in the building, there's there minus the rivets holding the trim on, there's no screws exposed, um, therefore no screws can leak. Um, and it just gives it a nice cleaner look while also, you know, providing a, uh, an R20 um, wall insulation value all the way around the building. What we have here, two different types of fans. Um, you can see the fans in the metal cages, slightly tilted down. Those are all in conjunction with the two heating systems that we have. You can see one heating system's facing west, this heating system's facing south, and the fans correspond to that. So in order not to have hot spots or cold spots in here, when these fans are going, those fans are going. And so this heater drives heat there, which that fan then drives to the next fan, to the next fan, to the next fan. The last fan directs the heat back to the heater, which drives it this way and using these fans to, to push it here. So we get a nice circulation of even heat distribution throughout it. And then the, the oscillating fans are simply, um, you know, just, just for growing. Um, they, they move air. They also, you know, move the plants that you're growing, which give them strength, uh, just like wind does to a tree. Um, as they're, you know, coming up with sprouts, if you can get them to, to move back and forth, that'll create a stronger base, a stronger stock, uh, and make the, the plants more resilient. Down at the end, uh, always on the west end, are your exhaust fans. Um, and the automated system will use as many of them as it needs to in conjunction with your four louvers and your 16 by five wet wall. Um, so there's a, a, an actuator motor on the outside which will draw that door open um, in, in various angles to supply the airflow going through this building to maintain its temperature and humidity levels. So what we have here are six 36 inch uh, exhaust fans. And then we have also six 24 inch exhaust fans. There's two more up top that control the upper atmosphere uh, exhausting situation. And so you're looking at uh, what's 72, about 90 square feet of uh, exhaust capabilities. They won't always run all at the same time, um, but should the need occur, they can open up at the same time, which will create about a 15 mile an hour breeze through this building at all times and the automated system will control those as well. So the, the south wall um, and the south roof are triple walled polycarbonate uh, panels, which is the, the, the heaviest, thickest polycarbonate panels that you can buy. Um, and they, they provide a, a great amount of insulation uh, to the system as well as being durable and lasting for, for years uh, from it. Um, specialized fastener, specialized all aluminum channel to hold them together. A lot of guys, you know, cut it using a skill saw. The skill saw shreds the polycarbonate and then drives those shreds into the straws of the carbonate panel in which you have to remove them. Um, otherwise they'll build up. And actually when the convection starts, they'll actually rise uh, up through these straws, creating light deflection and, and just an overall bad look. And so we cut them with, a, with an abrasive cutoff wheel. It, it, it melts versus shreds um, and then we don't have any of that uh, any of that material built up inside of these things um, and then we we custom cut everything everything gets installed long and so walls go on first just like any you know traditional build does and we'll put them up there they'll be sticking up a couple of feet in the air all the way across and then we'll use lasers to cut them off so that we have a perfect baiting seal when the roof comes over the top of the wall we don't have any variations in height you know when you when you pre-cut panels you'll have variations with concrete and the, and the pony wall um, so we try to eliminate all of that same thing with the roof the roof pieces go on full length they'll be hanging off here about a foot or so and then we we shoot a laser down it and and cut them off all at a perfect perfect elevation so bursa tube i mean really is the best option for for a greenhouse uh compared to any other traditional materials, uh, simply because they're they're non-interferent um, or as, as minimal interferent with the light that comes through these things as you can possibly be. Um, and to top that off, you know, triple flow coat galvanized tubing is reflective. 
it's shiny, it doesn't absorb light through it. If you were to use a, you know, say a red iron structure, of course you're looking at, you know, shadows that are 12 to 15 inches deep, alternating, running through your building. And, you know, versus a wood structure where you'll have a ton of light absorption through the wood, it'll, it'll suck up a lot of your light, as well as not be um, optimal for the harsh conditions that go on inside these buildings. Um, and then, you know, Versa 2 being as versatile as it is, makes it so that all the hardware goes in like you want it to go in and the places that you want it to go in versus any other traditional where you don't have a, you know, a six by eight post or a giant I-beam column or something like that that you have to deal with. And it's true dimensional form of Versa 2 makes it unique and very user-friendly for building a greenhouse foil. Literally every square foot that you don't have a piece of polycarbonate, you don't have radiant beaming rays coming through. Um, so the more square footage that you cut down on your polycarbonate use, the less you're going to have to deal with the heat that's built up inside them. Yeah, they're, they're triple sealed, they're airtight. Uh, you, can, you can provide a positive um, pressure inside these to keep out pollination from any other source, dust from any source, uh, bugs, anything like that. So they, they can maintain a positive pressure inside to keep all external influences out. I have been working with VersaTube for 20 years now. I have built uh, somewhere between 3,000 and 3,500 VersaTube structures. And I'm, I'm sold. <laughs> I, I really, uh, yeah, I've worked with VersaTube so much um, and I, I do fabrication on the side for, for myself and, and as a hobby and things like that. Um, and that's what I use. I don't, I don't even know how to use any other steel that's not VersaTube steel. Um, I've found that I can essentially build anything I want from a flatbed trailer to a go-kart out of VersaTube steel.